Hi everyone, it's Paul from the Brockton Public Library welcoming you to episode 8 of the virtual Everyone Has a Voice. Fall is here and so is the coronavirus, so we'll continue to do these for you online and um, I miss all of you regular poets very much and I look forward to seeing you as soon as we can. Meanwhile, everybody out there, enjoy the virtual version and, um, and take care, be safe, be well. Hello, my name is Christina Liu, and I will be reading from my piece entitled A Lunar Poem. I dreamt of blood-red canary pages edged in saffron, one horizon, one dash. The pigeons outside our grime, our cracked glass overlooking Triborough Bridge, our tribe warbled. I was always afraid of firecrackers each new year. I couldn't tell them apart from red envelopes, red badges, scarlet shamed, my face at the food stamps and lunch tickets. My sister and I never had strawberry jello until public school, quivering and intact in artifice. We swallowed while fire crackled new animals, ram, pig, tiger, dragons breathing in our small cavities, sharp tongues lashing on our faces, blood welts. Hey everybody, this is Jason Wright from Oddball Magazine. Here's another one from, from a poem that I've written. So it's called Anger Has It. It is my beautiful little drug, anger. It's all I have left. It's not a medicine off the shelf. It's so much more than that. It has followed me home like a little puppy, and I love my anger. I let it out to play in these little backyard poems, and but my anger, it's not real anger. It is pseudo, it is pseudo rage. It is only fake news. I am not angry, I am ugly. A perfect concoction that grabs a hold of you, strengthens you like an elixir makes you type harder on the keys like something matters when nothing really does. Like if you get to the end of this poem, there is a meaning behind everything, but there is no resolution. You want it. You just wait for there to be one. There is no resolution without an ending. And love is no resolution when there is none. And it has all of you, or you think it does. Wetlands in November for Terry Burke. Oak leaves cling despite the biting storm. So now I see the beauty of browns, rich like old leather bound books, and the soul fairy rose tinged with pink survives its vibrant neighbors. Why are the subtle ones strong and the brilliant ones gone? Then the wind quickens and scrub pines sway till the tallest one snaps, first blackout. My last match lights my only candle. I'm going to read a poem called Be a Light. Um, I want to thank, um, I want to thank uh, Philip for this opportunity. Um, and I am going to read this for you. It's called Be a Light. Uh, trigger warning, there's some language. Okay. I need to write again. Push through the minutia. Tap harder on the keys. Pull something out of me. I have to grab each shard of broken glass from each solid poem and cut my tongue with it. I want to provoke God and Satan to fuck and fight and make up and make love again. Brutal love. I want people to be judge and jury of who I am as a person. I want you to loathe me and love me. I want her heavenly body all over me. I don't got what it takes, but I type harder on the keys. Like if I type harder, the words will come easier like a beer shit, like a beer shit. Happy birthday, Bukowski. What would you have to say, sir, about Trump, the orange agent in the office? What would you say to our bumbling chief? Truthfully, I don't know. Hopefully you would tell him to fuck off, but then you might say, let's have a beer. Say, the world is rabid anyway. Let's have a pint. What would your IG look like 
Sir Charles. Wow, what garbage. What garbage this is. I continue, I continue like I can make a Marxist MAGA. MAGA, I forge on like there is a Sisyphus rock that I can bear down my teeth, grind and cut like Caribbean Coca-Cola. But I am none of this. And you are not who you say you are either. But I pretend that I'm a writer. I pretend that I have this with a big heart and a big wit and vocabulary that stumps them. And really, I am none of those things at all. I am trash on the sidewalk. I am an editorial in the 80s at some forgotten archive. And this is shit. And yet I type on like somewhere there will be a light. Maybe in the rewrite. I am no artist. I was. I am not. I never will be. I am. This is Joyce Wilson. This poem is about an experience that uh, I had in Beirut, Lebanon, when my husband and I visited there and we were looking for records of his grandparents to verify their birthplace. And I happened to step in on a church service where women sang much of the service entirely in chant, and it moved me a great deal. Afternoon prayers at the Maronite Chapel in Beirut. We'd been to the archdiocese before to ask about the lost ancestral homes that the grandparents of my husband left behind while young, when they had barely come of age. The folks we met in offices and halls misunderstood, it seemed, how old we were, that we were seeking information from not World War II, but one. At last, a clerk suggested going to the mountains, where existing village churches might have saved recorded documents of births and deaths from ravages of time and civil wars. That day, I saw the note for services at four o'clock and so went back to slip in through the chapel door where worshipers were few and old. More women there than men who must have been at work or timing out, as was my husband, who would meet me soon. For this service at midweek, between seasons, the space was much like chapels everywhere, the wooden beams, maybe maple or oak, with nave and pews, an elevated stage, communion table, golden tabernacle. In the middle of an empty row, I sat apart to show respect and deference for form, the ritual and theater, as if I knew what I was doing there. The priest stepped back, the women led the chant, their voices droned in wild, robust lament. Although the syllables in Arabic were strange, I still could sense the universal prayer to Mary, Mother of God, Salwe Marie. The moody thrumming sounds reached out to her, who having lost a son, could transform grief today and at the hour of all our deaths into a blessing whole and tangible. The resonating echo of their chant, its humming like cicadas in a field where grass is cut and gathered into sheaves, is sung by those who live as if already dead, to hover closer to pragmatic need than much of what we listen to at home, the bouncy hymns against New England night, to join the rituals of death to life and savor loss before our loss of sight. Hey, it's Jason from Oddball Magazine. Uh, Jason Wright, this poem's called Lamenting Tuesday. If you like any of my poems, you can check them out at oddballmagazine.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Oddball Magazine. Listen to the Grateful Dead, and you are dead. And I once knew what it was meant to be gratefully dead. It was a manic afternoon. I wanted to play to you. It all made sense. You weren't dead. I could see you in the ether. The faint outline of you. It was in the moment I realized you were not dead. I was grateful for that moment. 
I woke up in a hospital bed two days after. Manic as ever, lamenting heaven. Stepping through the corridors of the sanitarium. Listening to the footsteps, the manic breathless footsteps. The acid trip turned ugly. So I came back down to earth and realized that I could never see you again. You were dead. Grateful as I might have been, I only now lament in mourning. You lost. And in this moment, as I recover with coffee, you are still gone. And only a faint melody plays in my ear. And I can meditate for hours like you would. And I can read the scriptures like you did. And I can laugh and reminisce, but you're gone. And that is a hard fact. A pill brought me back to that realization. You are gone and I am a manic man. Medicated from the sun. Trend fixed by the moon. And maybe in dreams I will see you. The time spent to bring you back. This is Joyce Wilson reading Beirut Garden. We walked the city streets arm in arm and talked of ways our common history unlocked the stories of our family, the tribes and feudal lords, the olive farms. Past windows where the fragrances of thyme and allspice, cumin, pepper, coriander, spoke of celebrations with the grandeur that flavors of the East and West combine. Past the garden and the busy unmarked church so far from home, and what we hope to find among the many things we'd leave behind, the answers to the questions of our search, what will become of the Syrian refugees? what will become of the Syrian refugees. This is the title poem from my book, Born Bridge. Not the hard rain the rivers crave, not the downpour to quench the forest floor, just a light mist on almost empty roads as I'm entombed in gray the only sound an intermittent shush, wipers clearing windshield. This quiet is pleasing, a monochromatic alone. When suddenly the overcast lightens from charcoal to dove, then splits into strands of mauve salmon rose, and the bridge ahead luminous, wrapped in a pale blue shawl. Each raindrop clings, glistening in pure light that's always there, even when hidden. I've come home. So, this poem is called Don't Do the Boat Thing, and it's kind of like uh, an homage to the poem So You Want to Be a Writer, by Charles Bukowski. So it's called, Don't Do the Boat Thing. Don't do the boat thing. Don't do it. When I say the ship in the bottle thing, I mean it, don't do it. Throw that bottle into the sea and do something else. Sew a flag of your favorite football team. That boat thing, don't do it. I mean, why? Play a video game. That video game thing, don't do it. Waste your brain on a model train. Wondering if peace through pain will come back again. Learn a skill like carpentry. Jesus did it, so why not? We all need tables and shelves. Wow, your friends. Climb a tree and pounce on a piglet, wrap a present in a bow and light it on fire. 
say, here's a piece of shit for a piece of shit. Or maybe take those broken puzzle pieces and glue them to the side of your car. Call it art. Just do it, baby. Cut the legs three inches off of you, all your tabletops. So everyone needs new chairs to sit and eat your Thanksgiving. Oh, Charlie Brown, kick a football. Pay for sex. Break a glass just to clean up the mess. But don't play video games. Don't do it. Maybe try the boat thing. Don't try the boat thing. Don't do it. Don't buy a boat and pretend to sail it. If you just put it in the water, it might sink, and that's a risk. Don't do it. You'll sing with the sharks. But baby, sing with the sharks in your tightest outfit. Do that. That's a good idea, Scuba Steve, with cut off sleeves. Baby, you're going places. Maybe you'll be in a video game. Playing ship in a bottle. On repeat, as you try and beat the boss. You're gonna be a star. But please, don't buy the boat to do it. So hey, if you uh, if you like any of uh, the poems uh, that you hear, uh, check them out at uh, oddballmagazine.com. Um, we are a local poetry magazine that is global online. www.oddballmagazine.com. Peace. Hello, everyone. My name is Christina Liu, and I have decided to read a poem by the late, great Dylan Thomas. It's entitled, And Death Shall Have No Dominion. It's for COVID-19. And death shall have no dominion. Dead men naked, they shall be one with the man in the wind and the west moon. When their bones are picked clean and the clean bones gone, they shall have stars at elbow and foot. Though they go mad, they shall be sane. Though they sink through the sea, they shall rise again. Though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death shall have no dominion. And death shall have no dominion. Under the windings of the sea, they lying long shall not die windily. Twisting on racks when sinew gives way, strapped to a wheel, yet they shall not break. Faith in their hands shall snap in two, and the unicorn evils run them through. Split up all ends, they shan't crack, and death shall have no dominion. And death shall have no dominion. No more may gulls cry at their ears, or waves break loud on the seashores. Where blew a flower, may a flower no more lift its head to the blows of the rain. Though they be mad and dead as nails, heads of the characters hammer through daisies, Break in the sun until the sun breaks down, and death shall have no dominion. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Jason again. Uh, Jason Wright. Uh, here's another one. It's called Sail. As I come down from the mania, I wake up. I see the things I've done and the stuff dug up. I see the time has come back down and slowed to an approximate second. And time is not a construct, or maybe it is. It was something I said. To me, it made sense at the time all five senses did. But time is one second, and 60 seconds is a minute. And maybe in mania, a second is infinite. But maybe that's when you are waking in it, like a wave. It grows until you are rolling with it. The wave hits, things go to shit, and the hospital comes into the distance. The view becomes less timid, and all of a sudden it's your sudden instinct to get relief from it. And you run around in that hospital like monkey business around the halls to be a nurse or med assistant to witness it, the, the shit that I did, the embarrassment at the thought of it, how the slightest sets you off in a minute and you are done being victim. This is your jungle, Jim, a prison without society's restrictions 
I look back at the last time and I'm still not right. I am not right. My wife's not right. Nope. Left a long wake behind with the tidal waves struck. Manic mind went to what the fuck. And long last, the time is dialed back. The sail's been strung. The sun is up. The winds died down. The course compass set. And this ship sails back in to the harbor to next day try and sail again. This is Joyce Wilson reading a poem about the sacred cedars of Lebanon. The sacred cedars. The cedars know the history of the earth better than history itself. So wrote de la Martine in 1832. What makes them prosper where the others fail? Diminishing in number, they endure even as their groves bear yellow leaves. The villagers who come to pray beneath the oldest canopies of their great boughs have long believed in their intelligence, which knows the thing better than the story of the thing, the dark core within the body of the form, embraced between the green branches. All right, here's another poem. It's called uh, Uppercut. Here is my mind in a nutshell. Sick as a man that don't feel well. Lit up like a lantern. One more light that's going. Taken down by the undertow. Let's keep flowing. I stay on top with each line I, I got on a pad to quote Nietzsche. Being sick ain't easy, but being the sickest was easiest to me. Floating free behind the beat like the elite Ali. Rest in peace. 300 cc's of positivity. Too much hate in this place. Take it down a degree. Bombs going off. Shots fired in clubs. Where's the love before I go numb? Maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe just high strung. Got the gift of gab and straight acid on my tongue. But Prof gave me a chance to rock it on this beat to mix it up with the MPC. I am J-S-N-W-R-T, the illest, putting rhymes to the sheet, putting the illness in the business. Got Star Wars on the brain, yeah, the Force Awakens, been writing the list of mistakes I keep making, but shit, I'm just playing on the radio station. Put patience in the patients in the waiting room waiting. Got Doctor Strange on the tables, got the illest on the beat, got the food on the table, getting hungry for the feast. Yeah. Guess a little of me turned down into a dope MC, putting down rhymes and Crayola lines, coloring out the lines. I guess I did it best till I reached that step. I will not regress. What's the next subject? So what's next? I guess my pen bleeds respect to the hip hop who came and went, to the MCs who never TKO'd, who believed in each and every word they wrote. We salute you. Who got down and got back up, who never let go, we salute you. When they said give up, fought back hard, said fuck you, we salute you. And hit them back with the uppercut, true. Crayola pen style. Depression, metaphors, loaded verse with metaphors. Mm -hmm.